Hey guys, um, a lot of you have requested to see a behind-the-scenes video of how I make my trains videos, and, uh, considering I just finished the engines of Sodor, I feel it's only appropriate. Of course, um, at the time of this video, I've already finished, um, the final episodes of Engines of Sodor, but, you know, uh, the stuff that's being recorded is whilst I was doing, um, uh, Boulder Strikes Again and, uh, The Wrath of Boulder. So, yeah, here we go. So here's a basic overview. Uh, the program I use to simulate all this stuff is called Trains, T-R-A-I-N-Z, and my version is the 2010 version. It's a, uh, you know, basically, it's a really cool game if you haven't used it. Um, you can basically uh, create your own train routes, and um, they also have sessions and all that. You know, it's just a pretty cool train simulator. And um, the Thomas stuff is... Um, most of it was downloaded from a site called Sodor Island 3D, but, you know, other sites as well. And, uh, yeah, you basically download all the Thomas stuff and you install it into the program, you know, the routes, the engines, uh, etc. So, yeah. Um, over the years, I've considered upgrading the trains program to, like, 2012 or a new era, but, you know, I just didn't want to have to go through reinstalling everything and... But I will say, though, I don't know if it's because I've installed so much on trains or if it's my computer, but it has gotten so slow these days. It's unbelievable. But anyway, you open the route, you add the trains there, and, uh, you know, you make the trains move. And then then I use a game recording software called Fraps. It's, um, yeah, it's basically, you know, it records the screen, but it doesn't, um include the mouse, and then you can hit certain keys that, you know, get rid of all the menus, so it's just no menus and everything, so it actually looks like a real shot. So yeah, and then after that, um, you know, I edit it all together, then do narration, music, etc. So, let's get into the process. So the first thing I do, obviously, is come up with an idea, and to be honest, that is the hardest part of the whole process, like, hands down, by far. Towards the end of the Engines of Sodor, I was just running out of ideas. But anyway, after that, um, once I find a solid idea, I uh, write a script. So let me bring that up. I use Google Docs so I can, you know, access it anywhere. And here's the script for the Boulder first Boulder episode. Obviously, when I recorded the video, the script wasn't done yet, but obviously now it is. So yeah, um, as you can see, it's a very basic script. Um, it's not in that special format that they use in the film industry. You know, it's just so I, uh, speeds up the process. Uh, yeah, so I just type stuff in, and um, the sad thing is, um, I usually go with the first draft. Like I very rarely make major modifications unless it's absolutely necessary. You know, I don't, you know, proofread it and all that. Yeah. So yeah. That's the script. Yeah, pretty much what is said exactly in the episode. And let's look at some other scripts from other projects. Um, I'm blurring this out because I've got some private files on here. Let's see. Uh, no, I don't want to show that because that's that would spoil future episode. Yeah, let's see. Oh, let's open up Gordon's episode from NWR Origins. Yep, as you can see, it's pretty much the same. This is, like, the same process I've used ever since the beginning. Like, it has not changed at all. Alright, so when I'm ready to film them, um, you know, I just open trains. But before that, as I said before, I use a program called Fraps to uh, capture the video. And here it is, right here. Um, so basically, you can program it, so when you're in the game, if you press, like, F9, it'll start recording. Or if you press F10, it'll take a screenshot. A lot of you have noticed, I don't, like, unlike most people, I use screenshots for static shots. Um, you know, I don't use, you, you know what I mean, I don't use footage for every single shot. And, you know, that's just because it speeds up the process much quicker and it doesn't take up as much space. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a cheap guy. Alright, I'll take you guys into surveyor mode of trains. Um, let me just bring up the footage. And here we are on Crovens Gate Works, some Scarlowy Railway route. As you can see, you can add a locomotive in this tab. You know, I just moved him using the Move tab. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to add another locomotive. Um, Jim is also in this scene, so... 
Ugh, seems to have frozen. Huh. That tends to happen in this route. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't show the rotating thing here for Jim's model. I should have used someone else. But yeah, you just add him using the add button. And uh, here's how you uh, change, you know, the the faces on the engines. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. It depends on the model. But this way, um, you can do it 3D. Uh, yeah, so happy, smug, that's a creepy face. And uh, yeah, smiling. So yeah, that's how you change the 3D faces. Um. Alright, so now I'm in driver mode, and, uh, yeah, there's the horn, and, uh, so this is how, you know, you make the trains move. You know, you can maybe go forward or backwards using that, or you can use the W or a X key to make it go back and forward. And here's the cab, and here's the, you know, exterior view. You can also do free roaming. That's what you do when you're not tracking the engine. So, yeah. I should now talk to you about the flying camera, which is a great tool I discovered um, uh, right before the beginning of season four. And uh, basically, um, it's basically a locomotive. It's classed as a locomotive, but it's a camera. And the yeah, I'll show you. So here, there's the invisible. Tr this route was made by a uh, um, Soder Island Roots a long time ago. I wanted to use Scarloe Reneus' roots, but they only work in 2012 and above. So here's the flying camera. And, um, so yeah, it's a locomotive you can add. There you can move it, and, um, now let's go into, uh, driver mode, and I'll show you. So here we are in driver mode. As you can see, the tracks disappeared, and, um, yeah, so this is the cab of the camera. As you can see, there's nothing there, so you can use it as a camera, you can move, pan around, and when you move forward, you know, you can use it as an actual camera. This is how I achieved, you know, the, sh the POV shot of the boulder going down the mountain. And, uh, here's another POV shot of boulder, you know. You can move using the arrow keys, you know, left or right, or you can just go forward using the, you know, W and X key. So, anyway, um, I said before the red track it um it shows up in surveyor as you know red track but when you go into driver it disappears and this way you can uh, you know you can use it for uh, you know road characters or you could use it to do a derailment any just anywhere where the train is or thing is not on the track and uh, I'll show you what I can do with it yeah so um I raised the track quite up high this is for Harold's shot and uh, I put the, um, you know, the camera right there, and, uh, yeah. And this is another way I used it. Uh, here is, um, this is for the POV shot of Boulder, you know, detaching from Harold and landing on the ground. So, you know, I put the camera up there, uh, rotate it, and, you know, the camera just goes, you know, from the point of view of the camera, it captures it. Now, sometimes I have to create shots that are um, either too difficult or impossible to create just in the driver or surveyor mode. You know, for example, if I need to have a, a character rolling or moving and the character is only an object, which means you can't, you know, drive it. So what I do is basically chroma key it in. And uh, what I do is I create a root. And um, in the root, I create a large cliff. And, um, and then... I don't know if these textures came from the download station, but my trains game has all these textures, which are just pure colors. So, you know, p pure black, pure white, pure pink. And it's really good because, you know, it acts as like, you know, the same way as a green screen. So let me show you. Here's a, here's the root. That's the black section for, you know, if you're doing a white character or whatever. Here's a white section if you want to, you know, do if a character has black. And, uh, yeah. There's also pink if he's both those colors, and let me show you what I did with Thumper, because he was not a movable character. He wasn't drivable. So yeah, here we are. This is the white section. And you can adjust, you know, the time of day to get rid of all the shadows on the cliff there. So you add uh, Thumper there. He's only an object, so he doesn't need track. And um, then what you do is... Uh, add the invisible track right next to him or right in front of him yeah like that and then you add the flying camera and yeah so now we're in driver mode and um, 
You can adjust the time of day to get rid of the shadows. And uh, then go to cab view. Then press down on the arrow key. You know, you can go forward by driving it or pressing W. And you know, you can move around. Let's see, where do I want him? Yeah, that's pretty good. And as you can see, it creates this big white background that you can, uh, you know, select in uh, the photo program I use and uh, delete it, you know, making it transparent. Or you can use it to, like, chroma key it if it's a video. I also did this for Harold in some shots. Uh, let me show you. So I put Harold in front of the black background. And you're probably wondering, doesn't the, you know, the black propellers get keyed out? Well, I'll show you. Here, so Harold... The model is a pantograph, so basically Harold goes up, and as you can see, um, the propellers are no longer a problem because they have the red, you know, ring around them. And this is not chroma keying, I should say. It's not like taking all black out. It's just taking black that surrounds the area of non-black. Okay, so yeah, that's filming done with. Um, now I'm going to show you how I created the boulder. Uh, there is a trains model of boulder available, but for some reason it just would not work on my trains game. It just wouldn't show up. So what I had to do is I used a program called Animator, A-N-I-M-8-O-R. It's like one of the oldest, you know, computer animating software available, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, not, like, professional, but it, you can do some pretty neat stuff on it, so... So I'm not going to show, like, how I animate the boulder and all that, you know, how to use the software, because, you know, it would just take too long. But, yeah, just a simple overview. Um, right now I'm in object mode, and... So, yeah, here's the boulder. You literally just, you know, create a sphere, then you add a texture, which was an image I found off the internet. Let me show you. And there's a new sphere I created, just to show you how I did it. And, yeah, then you subdivide it to make it smoother. So yeah, it's a simple process. Now I'm in scene mode, and that object right there is the camera. This is the point of view of the camera, and there's a camera right there. You can move it. You know, if it was co boulder was coming towards you, you'd move the camera towards the boulder. So yeah. And I want to get rid of the floor and, uh, you know, make the background bright green so I can green screen it in. So what I do is I go to environment, you know, select the color, and then get rid of the ground grid, and yeah. So now I can uh, animate it and then, you know, green screen it in. Alright, now before I officially start editing all the clips together, what I need to do is prepare some clips for, you know, the editing, like the clip, the clips or shots of Boulder. So I'm going to show you, so I'm going to show you what I do if I need to insert Boulder into a scene, but Boulder's not moving, you know, just static. So I've taken a screenshot of Boulder, you know, in front of the green screen and uh you know in the animating program and we go to new we're gonna create you know basically a transparent image where there's only the boulder so we copy paste and uh use the toolbox and then we use this tool called the magic wand where you can basically select a solid color in this case green then delete it like that and that way um you can save this image as boulder transparent and uh you know, it's a PNG, so in the fo in the video editing, you you can drag it on top of, you know, another clip, and you don't need to chroma key it. It's already transparent like that. Let me show you what I did with Harold. So this is a shot of Harold in front of that black screen I showed you earlier, the black root. And uh, I'm going to turn this into a transparent. Oh, well, there's the rope I used for uh, when Harold was lifting the boulder. Let's get rid of that. So yeah, then we go to New... Transparent, just like I did with Boulder. And then copy-paste. And then again, move it a bit so we can select it correctly. And yeah, magic wand tool again. Select the black there, delete it. Yeah, and uh, select the black there, delete it. Delete that, delete that, delete that, and... Whoops. And that's what happens if you select a color that's not solid. Let's see. And yeah, like that. So now you can insert it in without chroma keying it. 
and then you can just save it as a PNG, and I'll show you why that's an advantage later. So if I want to insert boulder or any object into a shot that's not, you know, a video, you know, screenshot, um, that's a pretty easy process. Um, you basically just op did that pro do that process I just did with deleting the background of the, you know, the thing you want to put in. Uh, so yeah, I just select boulder. You copy and so you just copy and paste like that. You select boulder, but since you know he's a transparent background, you know it only selects the boulder, and then you can scale him, move him, and yeah, you just save the image, and that's how boulder is put into that shot. So now I'm going to show you how I uh, do the narration. So here's um, I just record it in a program called Good Audacity. Lord, it's a free that? audio editor. Use a microphone and uh, you know just speak into it when recording. Uh, if you want to delete something, you do that, and, you know, you can... Yo, man, yeah, what's up? A, you can trim it. It's a really cool program. And you export, and then you export it as whatever you want. M -A MP3, WAV, etc. All right, now on to editing. Um, the software I use is called Sony Movie Studio. It's, it's basically the cheap version of Sony Vegas. You know, it doesn't have all the... You know, it doesn't have all the features that Sony Vegas has. Um, it's like uh, when I bought it, it was like forty dollars compared to like five hundred for Sony Vegas. But yeah, I strongly recommend it if you're not trying to do something too extreme. And uh, you, before I used Windows Movie Maker, and I did that until like the third episode of NWR Origins. And yeah, you can probably see a big difference. But anyway. Um, so, you probably all know that every episode starts with the Henry the Green Engine's production logo and the, you know, the intro. And uh, for season five, um, I basically, uh, I've already created it. I um, edited, you know, the intro and the logo together combined, and then I exported it. So here we go. I just dragged the file onto the timeline. And, well, this is a bit slow. And yeah, there he is, Henry rolling along. Uh, so yeah, and next I want to add, you know, the titles. So I've added a title right here. Um, uh, right now it's in the generic font that comes, the default font. So I want to change it to Rockwell, or I mean not Rockwell, Bevan, which is what they used in the first two seasons of Thomas. And, uh, you know, make it yellow, you can scale it a bit. And then you add the outline to make it look like it came from, you know, the early seasons of Thomas. And there we go. It looks pretty legit. And yeah, and then you can... And then to give it, you know, the fade effect, you just do that. Let's see. Now, the problem with um, Movie Studio, it's... The graphics, when you're editing, are not that great, but once it exports, it's pretty damn good. There's a duck, and then I can trim the title like that so it doesn't, you know, interfere with the other titles. And those other titles were, you know, put in when I first exported the whole intro and uh, the logo. Now it's time to add in the first shot. Here we go. I keep the videos in separate because I have to convert them because it's, you know, the codec issue and all that. But anyway, I just dragged and dropped the first shot of Rusty, and uh, I don't use audio from trains anymore, very rarely. You know, I just use sound effects from online, and I'll get to those later. And uh, now I'm adding in the narration. And there we go. So yeah, and move it there. So now the narration will play. Ooh, rusty, rusty, the little rusty. diesel engine has worked and now on the Scarlet. I'm going to add in the music, and um, for this shot, I'm going to use this part. I'm going to use Sudrian Afro's uh, Rusty theme. I have all the music from different creators in one folder, and uh, yeah, so you can play it. You can hear Rusty's theme. Rusty, the little diesel engine has worked. So now. I put in a lot of footage. What I want to do is add, you know, the first shot of Boulder rolling in. And that's where I do green screen. So here's the footage of Boulder rolling, which I 
you know, rendered from the animation program. And so what I want to do is, um, luckily this doesn't have audio attached to it, so I can just, you know, pull it up right there. I don't have to detach any audio. And I'm going to trim it to where it belongs. And then I'm going to open up Chroma Key. And uh, you take the dropper, get rid of all the green. Let's see. Whoops. Now you can, as you can obviously see, Boulder is transparent, so you have to adjust a lot of the knobs on the chroma gear. So let's see, let's get it to a point where I can see him. And the, let's adjust this. Oh, wrong way. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm really impressed with how this turned out. It looks like it came from in trains when it isn't. So yeah, there's Boulder missing Rusty by inches. Another thing I chroma keyed in was the explosion. So uh, now with this, it has audio attached because I ripped it from YouTube. So the first thing you got to do is, um, well, obviously, you make the audio quiet and uh, you know trim it to where you want to have it. And then what you have to do is get rid of the audio track. So you go to group and remove from. And this is an advanced mode. And then I always like using simple mode. So I'm going to go back to simple mode but yeah you just drag it on top and uh, it's pretty much the same principle you know, trim it and uh, so bring the chroma key back on now this is a you know a three a stack of three different tracks you know it has the explosion the boulder and the regular footage oops let me get that in the camera view so yeah, it's same process. Now that shot I had to do chroma key because it involved a moving thing. Now if the shot, you know, that you're superimposing in doesn't have movement, you can just use an image, and that's where the PNGs come into play. So this right here is a shot of um Harold taking off. See, like that. And um, you know, that was not made in trains. It's just literally let me show you. It's just a PNG image I made in GIMP. Yeah, so there's Harold, um, you know, with the boulder attached. And uh, let me show you, you know, a little bit how I animated it. You know, it, it's hard to explain, but you know, you just move the selection thing up and down to, you know, you animate it. So you know, when it goes up, Harold goes up. It's like a camera panning. You know what? Let me show you in detail. So I've put, you know, the Harold PNG on top of another shot. And I'm going to open Pan Crop, and uh, you basically move the box, you know, the outline. Yeah, so if you can move it like that, and down here are all the keyframes. Oh, so, yeah, so if you play it, he moves. You, know, you can drag the keyframe back to make it faster, and uh, if I move it again, let's see what that does. You know, wee, wee, I'm Harold. So yeah, that's how it works, basically. Let me show you a few more tricks with GIMP. Um, for example, if the the asset doesn't have the ability to change faces, you can basically, you know, do it in this program. Yeah, so you, I'm going to select Thumper's face, and then I'm going to go to the Ripple tool. And yeah, it's basically the same as in Photoshop. So I'm going to have it on the Move option, and, uh, yeah, you can move, basically move the image pixels like that to make him sad. So now I'm going to show you how I add in sound effects. So, first off, you know, for, for this project especially, I needed to download some new ones. So I uh, found some good ones, uh, Earthquake Sound for Boulder, and uh, copy it. And then I'm going to go to a YouTube MP3 ripper. These, like, saved my life. I use these so much. This is only one of, like, the thousands you can use. I think this one's pretty safe, but... Yeah, you know, just be careful when using them. Make sure they don't have any viruses. So, there. And what it's gonna do, after I pasted the link, it's gonna start converting the video into an MP3. And once it's done, I'm gonna download it and put it in my special sound effects folder. Now all the Thomas related sound effects, you know, like 
puffing, chuffing, whistles, those all came in a zip file, which I downloaded from a user called uh, GW Shunter. I believe I got it on um, uh, Sodor Island forums, and, uh, you know, I think you need an account to access this, um, you know, this uh, sound effects thing. But, you know, some other people post sound effects, like I know MallardFan62 posts a lot of uh, sound effects, which you can just get off YouTube. So yeah, and um, now I want to add in some sound effects. So here's the folder from GWR Studios. I'm going to put in Rusty's Horn. Whoops, wrong place. And drag it down there. Diesel engine has worked on the diesel Rusty's engine. Horn. Has diesel engine has worked on the show you how I put in a you know steam engine sound effect. As you can see, the folder has tons and tons of, you know, different, like, all the different sounds of chuffing and puffing from the TV series. So I'm going to drag this one in for James. For the rest of the day, and and the engines all talked to us loud. The railway was yeah, closed for the rest. Here goes. Move it to the right place. I'm going to start with the a railway fade to make it ease in more easily. That was an awkward saying. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so now I've finished uh, the whole project, um, everything seems to be in place, so um, now I want to add some credits. So what I'm going to do is I copied the, the title credit, and I'm going to paste it right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. <clears throat> edit generated media. And this time I'm going to use the Rockwell font, which is what they used um, in Thomas, you know, post season two. It's, you know, it pretty much Thomas is a met generic font. Yeah, scale it down a bit. Yeah, there we go. Written, edited, uh, filmed. Edited. No, not Etihad. Edited. <laughs> Isn't Etihad like the airline of uh, Emirates or something? And there we go. And so, yeah, I'm going to scale this text up a bit. Whoops, too big. There we go. It's perfect. And then I'm going to scale this to fit the screen. There we go. And yeah, that's it. And then I just copy and paste this uh, this clip, you know, over and over again for, and then just edit it for all the other credits. So now I'm officially done. It's time to export. So uh, I go up to project and make movie and save it to my hard drive. So yeah, um, that's it pretty much. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, like what if something I didn't go over in the video, uh, please feel free to ask in the comments below. But yeah, this is um, basically how I made the Engines of Sodor episodes, and yes, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.